What's up everyone, Thrall's Metal here once again. I am Necrotic Nick, and I have an album review for you. This is yet another one that comes to us courtesy of our friends at Screaming Toilet. Again, it's a cool site full of all sorts of pop culture articles, reviews, all sorts of stuff on there about toys, movies, music. Pretty fun time, definitely check out the site. So today I'm reviewing Diavos' new album, Casus Belli, which is Latin for an act or event that is used to justify or provoke a war. So, interesting dark subject matter already. Now, this actually came out on the 29th of November last year on Self Made God Records, but we didn't get it until now, so I figured why not review it. These guys are from Poland, they formed in 1997, and this is their sixth full length. And I believe two of the members of this band are also in Ulcer, which is another really cool death metal band you should check out too. So the album opens up with the title track, and we skip any sort of pretense, no intros, it just gets right down to it. The song absolutely explodes. Now, these guys are billed as technical death metal, and maybe just a little bit of brutal death metal, but honestly, this song right away kind of had like a death grind-like feel. Like, this reminded me a lot of early Misery Index, to be honest. This is the shortest song on the album, and it's pretty much the pace setter. This gives you a good idea of what this album predominantly will offer. It is very fast. Lots of blast beats, very angular, palm-muted riffing, and yeah, it's heavier than hell. Now, the production on this is pretty good. I think the guitars are just a tad muddy. They kind of remind me of Eric Rutten's sort of production, and parts of this even kind of sound like Hate Eternal, so it kind of works in spots. But generally, in tech death, I look for a little bit cleaner tone because the amount of instrumentation that goes into tech death is pretty astounding, and you kind of want to hear all that really clearly. Drums sound pretty solid, and the drums actually offer something on here which I haven't heard in a tech death album. I believe there is cowbell on this. They had a fever, and they wanted cowbell, and they got it. The next track, Parallel God, in between this sort of blast beat breakdown you all of a sudden hear a cowbell, or that or a woodblock. I'm pretty sure it was a cowbell. And just when I was like, nah, that wasn't a cowbell, it comes in again. Now this cowbell actually pops up on this album quite a bit. There's even a section where it's sort of a cowbell blast beat over a slower drum beat, and then periodically used in fills. And it's used really effectively. It isn't just there to just do your standard four or four time little cowbell ACDC track. It's actually incorporated in the kit very cleverly. Now, Parallel God actually shows off a little bit of their groovier section and a little bit of atmosphere. They throw in some samples here and there. They're kind of used sporadically on the album, but mostly they don't feel intrusive. They feel like they actually enhance the mood. And this one actually has like a kind of a gothic choir sample on here that was actually used really effectively. And as far as being in the mix, they're not too out in front or they're not pushed back to the point where you're like, why are they even there? They're pretty much in that nice little mid-level where they're pretty good. Now, this may when it comes down to the style, it's very rigid and very fast paced, like there's blast beats all over this album. And it kind of reminded me a lot of a band like Archspire, except of course not quite on that level because Archspire's quite something else to behold. The vocal cadences aren't as fast as Archspire, but they are very quick, deliberate. And the vocals are pretty good on this. He has a good solid growl, it's intelligible, but it's still deep and brutal. So pretty much like that kind of happy balance that I kind of like. As far as song structure, you get big, chuggy, riffy moments that are very indicative of bands like Cannibal Corpse, but also like with a little bit more technical flair and sort of a off-kilter songwriting style like Cryptopsy. So it's a really interesting mix of both riffy and technical. Now the next track, Bitter End, actually opens up more straightforward. It comes in with a cool blast beat over what is actually a little bit simpler riff, and then slows it down to a nice groovy pace with a good double bass rhythm to it and really actually brings in some cool melody and this really stood out as a dynamic moment and this part kind of just keeps slowing down a little bit to almost where it's a death doom pace then abruptly shifts into a tech death tantrum now i like transitions like that but this one felt a little knee jerk and it kind of took away from what i thought was a really cool moment on this that opening section really stood out now they bring it back towards the end in sort of a reverse order they bring in that groovier section and then go back into that opening blast beat and i like how they did they even add some layered melodies on top of that but the whole middle section of this i think it's okay but it feels like really disjointed from 
the front and the back half of it. It's just kind of an odd song. There were parts in there I really liked, and then it kind of just went off the rails a little bit and kind of lost me. They get a little too busy on the drums and sections, and kind of lose the sense of groove, and that's generally kind of an issue I have with Tech Death. I am a huge fan of it, but I don't like seeing bands going overly technical and sort of forsaking the song itself and kind of losing hooks in there, because I need hooks, otherwise it's going to pretty much just sound like a collection of notes and riffs. The song Victims was one of my favorites on here, mainly because of one key moment on here. They bring in the cowbell for a breakdown, and it works. This is a huge standout moment on here, and again, how they use this cowbell, it might be a woodblock, but I'm pretty sure it's cowbell, is really clever. This was a really cool standout moment, good groovy chug to it, very headbangable, thoroughly enjoyed it. Even took the time to close it out properly with a long fade out with some Slayer dive bombs. You know, those sort of fiercely metal moments that we all love. Now the last three tracks, I think, really highlight some more songwriting skill with these guys. Ataraxy, Nuclear Wind, and Prayer of Disavowed. Ataraxy and Nuclear Wind are the two longer tracks in here. They're both over five minutes. Most of these are around, around the four and a half minute range. Ataraxy is probably the first one on there. I'd say there's some real genuine atmospheric moments that kind of dial up that epic sense. There's even parts there that remind me of Nile which Nile is great at atmosphere. Now this one, unlike the other songs, there aren't many knee-jerk transitions. They take time to really work an entire section and make it very memorable with all the repetition. And because it doesn't have the knee-jerk transitions, this one flows very smoothly, and instantly I latched onto it. This was one of my favorite tracks in the entire album. Nuclear Wind actually showcases the cowbell right from the start. It fades in with the cowbell. This is that blast beat I was talking about, and it's really cool how they bring this in because it's just a slow drum beat and the cowbell is essentially being used as like the ride symbol on there. And while that's going on, it's just the bass line under that and the guitars come in for just a second and then erupt in this cool crawling riff on here, which reminds me a lot of early Gojira. So this was kind of an interesting little like building tension and then releasing it moment on here and it really worked. And again, the cowbell. It's just strange how they use it, but it's really interesting and I like it. So yeah, definitely props to the drummer on that one. Now this is easily the most melodic song on here, I think, and has the most melodic solo on here. Most of the solos on here are, you know, very technical, very shreddy, lots of tapping, and they're just very death metal-y, a lot of squealy dive bombs and all that. This one actually has a real sense of melody to it, and I think they actually took the time to construct like something that would fit the song in here, and it really works. Now, while I liked Prayer of Disavowed, I thought this one should have been interchanged with one of the last two songs. I think it's a good song. I think, honestly, it could have been the opening song, because the opening track, in comparison to the back half of the album, seems a little bit weaker and a little bit more one-dimensional. But this one still brings in some cool riffs. There's even like a Dying Fetus-esque breakdown in there that I thought was pretty cool. And some interesting lead melodies that kind of just come in as little squeals, but somehow they're very tuneful. But this album could have used a more dynamic closer, at least in my opinion. But all in all, I thought this was a pretty solid listen. I'm actually familiar with these guys. I have, I believe, four of their other albums, and they're all pretty damn good. This one is another one welcome amongst her discography. It's another solid album. So overall, I'm going to give it three and a half stars. Pretty good stuff on here. Definitely jam it if you're a fan of Tech Death, if you like Brutal Death, if you just like death metal. There's a lot of stuff on here that's really cool. I think towards the end of the album, they showed off a little bit more songwriting flair, and I thought there was more interesting stuff towards that back half. But there's still a lot of good stuff on this, and like I said, if you're a fan of death metal, there's a good chance you'll probably like these guys. So, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, and if you are new to the channel, subscribe, because we do shit like this all the time. Catch you guys later.